Member statements. Member statements. The member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On August 7th, the day after the long weekend, nearly 200 people jammed into the New Horizons Senior Centre in my riding of Davenport. It was the middle of the summer when many people are out enjoying perhaps uh, dinner on a patio or some time with their kids or some vacation, which I've, I've heard of. Uh, but these people came to a community meeting in my riding, um, and they were there because they are worried about the impact of this government's policies on their families their neighbours and their city. They wanted to know why, in 2018, their children will be taught a health and physical education curriculum from 20 years ago. They wanted to know why, when so many in our community are struggling to get by on ODSP or Ontario Works rates, those rates are being cut. And they wanted to know why the Premier is using the power of his office to interfere in the democratic elections of their city councillors. Most importantly, Mr. Speaker, these residents wanted to know what they could do to help fight back and stand up for the people who will be most affected by the mean-spirited agenda we have seen so far. Mr. Speaker, this government may be banking on the fact that summer is time when a lot of people aren't paying attention to this place, but at this town hall, our Davenport community proved once again that they are anything but complacent. I'm proud to bring their voices into this chamber and to stand with them as we work to win back the kind of Ontario we know is possible. Thank you very much. <laughs> Member statements. The member for Thunder Bay, Atacogan. Thank you, Speaker. In my former career, I had the privilege to represent the officers and civilian staff of Nishnabiaski Police Service, Anishinaabek Police Service, and Treaty 3 Police Service. I worked with them over the years to improve their working conditions and make for better community policing. The officers of Nishnabiaski Police Service serve over 35 very remote First Nations communities and it is the largest and most challenging. There is a film called A Sacred Calling, and I urge the members to watch it and increase their understanding of this issue. The work of all police officers is essential, and it's challenging, but these women and men face exceptional circumstances working often alone, being single frontline emergency staff, on fires, drownings, and other critical medical emergencies. The bravery and dedication I observed in all three services still inspires me. Our party during the campaign made a commitment to First Nations policing of $30 million, and I urge the present government not to become entangled in jurisdictional arguments and properly support culturally appropriate First Nations policing in the province of Ontario. Services intricately engaged in the fighting of guns and gangs, the opioid crisis, and ensuring safe communities. Thank you. Member statements. The member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. I am happy to rise today to speak about a wonderful event I attended recently in my riding of London Fanshawe. The Fanshawe Pioneer Village hosted a delightful and educational event called her story, celebrating women's histories. This was a celebration of her story rather than his story. The event was planned to coincide with the 100th anniversary of women gaining the right to vote federally. Ontario celebrated the 100th anniversary of the right to vote provincially last year. Earning the right to vote was an important step for women's emerging role in public sphere and gaining a public voice. As women in politics, I am always humbled to learn about those who have come before me and have helped shape a country that allows me a voice and to represent others, like the famous five. Emily Murphy, Irene Parlaby, Nellie McClung, Louise McKinney, Harriet Muir Edwards. The event also looked at women beyond the suffrage movement. There were so many women that inspire us as innovators and leaders and pioneers of their time. Educating men and women of all ages on these important contributions and accomplishments is incredibly important given the current era of reflection on women's issues and gender equity. This event offered a chance to reflect on how far we come, but also to think about how much further we have to go. I would like to thank the staff, the volunteers at Fanshawe Park, 
Pioneer Village for providing us with such an amazing experience, and the warrior women of the Positive Drum Circle for their performance. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Kay, to Orléans. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Member for Orleans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Akko Megali. I was made aware of this rare disease by a constituent of mine, Madame Dien Sauvé, who was diagnosed with Akko Megali in 2012. Today, I would like to talk to you about this rare sickness called Akko Megali that develops when your pituitary gland produces too much growth hormone during adulthood. Statistics show three in a million people are diagnosed each year with this disease, and currently there are just over 2,000 Canadians affected by agrochemagaly, with more still undiagnosed. Although the signs and symptoms vary from patient to patient, from persistent headaches, migraines, sleep apnea, and more commonly enlarged hands, feet, and facial features, the slow progression of the disease often makes it difficult to diagnose. However, a simple blood test, IGF-1, can quickly identify agromegaly. The patient's family doctor can then do a referral to an androchronologist for further testing along with a treatment plan which is crucial to ensure improved health of the patient. I am pleased to say that Diane formed a support group in Ottawa and has a Facebook group, Agrochromegaly Ottawa Awareness and Support Network, to help raise supports and bring awareness of this disease. Thank you to Ms. Sauvé for her courage, her tenacity, for sharing her experience with all of us. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Niagara Falls. Well, thank you very much. I'm really pleased to rise today to talk about an event that happened in Fort Erie on the weekend. It was called the Wiener Dog Races. So we had wiener dogs. 12,000 people attended the Fort Erie Racetrack to watch these little wiener dogs uh, run. Now, you couldn't bet on them in Ontario, uh, but they did run. There were six races, 72 wiener dogs. I think next year I'm going to try and have a race against the wiener dogs to see if the politician's quicker than the little wiener dogs, but we'll have to figure that out later. The track was booming, and this is what's important here, as we try to continue to work to keep the track open. Wagering on the traditional horse races was a way up. Beverage sales were double what they normally are on a Sunday. The track had some more people to watch the wiener dogs than the Prince of Royals. So I'm suggesting next year we call it the Prince of Wiener Stakes next year. Mr. Speaker, every time this track holds an event, the community comes out, and supports it. And it's time this government supported the community by bringing back slots to Fort Erie. When there's an attractor at the Fort Erie racetrack, people come and the track would thrive. We're getting lots of Americans to come, the community standing behind it, the mayor, everybody's standing behind it. So I'll continue to ask this government, again, reverse the wrong-headed decision by past governments and bring the slots back to Fort Erie. And at the end of the day, we're going to create hundreds of good paying jobs as our track thrives. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements. That was a great member statement. Okay. Reports by committees.